Hey guys, Robert here with another tutorial video, this time for Umbra Boundary Builder. Basically what it says in the title, it's for building boundaries. Which is a pretty, a pretty basic thing that a lot of games end up needing to do. And I've used a few different tools in the past for this, or done it by hand. And Really what i found so far is that either the user interface aspect is lacking, the user experience isn't good, uh, either sometimes it messes with my workflow a little bit. Sometimes I have like technical problems with it. Sometimes the the code is very, very messy and hard to read and hard to navigate. So I wanted to make my own package to do this that would be user friendly like I needed, simple and also lightweight because you want your invisible boundaries around your level to be as uh, as lightweight as possible. No massive uh, massive mesh colliders or anything like that. So Let's jump right into it. First things first, I'm going to go to the game object menu, Umbra Evolution, Umbra Boundary Builder, and I'm going to add a Boundary Builder. It's the same thing if I went to the Resources folder and drug the prefab into the hierarchy here. Now this is just a manager. We can add new boundaries, we can delete boundaries, we can control Z to go, go back. Uh, we can rename the boundaries because if you have a lot, like at one time I think I had, you know, 11 uh, 11 different zones I was working with. Some scenes have had a lot more than that. Just something to, to organize everything. And we can change the gizmo color. You'll see here once we build the boundary there will be gizmos that represent uh, what the mesh will be once we generate it. And we can also just go to a boundary, a specific boundary from from all these children here. Let's set a boundary color. Set a node color. And every, as always, everything has tool tips so you can read through it and see what uh, what's going on with all of these variables in the inspector. And the code is commented in such a way that hopefully if you're uh, more of a novice programmer or somebody who wants to learn a little bit more about the workings behind this package, you can go into the scripts and go through the comments and get an idea of what's going on and what my uh, what my thought process is, what uh, what I'm doing on a technical level. Let's make this boundary one meter thick and ten meters tall, not a hundred ten. <laughs> and you'll notice here if I'm in the game view and I click on this start placing nodes button, it's going to lock me into the scene view, and that's because we need to use the scene view to place our nodes. Because when I left click on a spot on the terrain, I'm getting I'm raycasting through the mouse out into space and seeing what's the first thing I hit and I'm going to place a node there. So if I click in space, nothing happens. Clicking on top of any collider, whether that's a terrain collider or a box collider or whatever, then we can, we can place nodes. I'm going to place one node out here to kind of show you the only thing that I'm not 100% happy with in this package and I think it's something that's unavoidable. And you can see here that I have this gap that this this section doesn't quite match up to these nodes. It's trying its best. Uh, it's taking kind of the average height difference between these nodes and trying to put the baseline in between them to distribute the, the variance on the top and bottom as much as possible. I could have done a number of different solutions. If you're really curious, you can use uh, my contact form or anything like that to get a hold of me and ask me about it. I tried too many solutions really probably some more time trying to solve this problem than uh, than on the rest of the package put together but this is the the best solution I came up with mainly because there's only one downside and it's only really a downside when you're looking at it like this where you can actually see where the mesh is going to generate from a player's perspective once we increase this boundary height they're not getting out I mean these uh, these connections are all relatively smooth so they're just going to see an invisible boundary that for all they know goes up into uh, into infinity and then to get rid of this gap on the bottom so that our nav mesh will generate pop properly and the character can't slip underneath it depending on the game you're making we can use this vertical offset here and just suck it down into the terrain so it's a easy problem to solve with what I have here compared to some of the other issues uh, <laughs> yeah don't uh, don't need to go into details but at one point all of my colliders looked like jagged teeth, and there were so many weak spots that the player could uh, could exploit to get out of. 
uh, all for the sake of trying to line everything up better. It just uh, <laughs> it was getting out of hand by the you know fifth iteration. So once we have kind of a, a boundary here, we can even continue this around. And we can close the loop off if we want this to be a looped in. What is that? It looks like a stomach, <laughs> stomach area. And using box colliders just enables all the box colliders that are around each of these sections. That way, the boundary is going to made up, be made up of a bunch of box colliders. It's a relatively efficient way to do that. We can also disable them. They're still going to be there. They're just going to be disabled, so you don't have to go through them all one by one. If for whatever reason you need to need to disable them. And something I didn't mention is you can go into these nodes and you can you can adjust them. You can raise them up, put them down, left, right, whatever you want. You can see the changes in real time that are going to happen. And then when I go into uh, into here and I want to stop placing my nodes, one of the things I'm going to want to do potentially is generate a mesh. And the reason we're going to want to generate a mesh is because Unity's nav mesh doesn't respect colliders. It only respects meshes. So we're going to generate a mesh that's going to perfectly align to these gizmos we see here. And it adds all the appropriate components for you and this material that I have here in the resources folder. So you can kind of see uh, with the wireframe here the mesh that's been generated, but we can also just crank up the alpha a little bit. Um, so you can see that it generated this, this mesh that perfectly matches the box colliders. And then when we go into our navigation, let's bake a nav mesh really quickly. It'll cut out the areas that we need to need to cut out. That's basically all there is to it, really. Um, we can add we can add more boundaries. I can show you over here one of the things that uh, that I used to test this issue I was having with the the vertical differences. If I go to this mountain fence, go to that. Let's make this one red with blue nodes. Oh, right. Better make it one meter thick, ten meters high. So if I if I just go here and I try to you know build something part way up with the system I'm using here, obviously that's not going to work. <laughs> the player is just going to waltz right through that uh, that gap. But if we split it up into smaller gaps between the nodes, kind of like you would with a uh, with a very intricate intricate spline or something like that, and we can get a nice a nice collider. We might want to make it you know taller, uh, suck it down into the into the train to make sure there's no little gaps underneath. Maybe even even taller, and we can get away with less nodes. We can use bigger gaps as long as we make the colliders taller and sink them down to the train more to get rid of those. You see these little these little gaps that would form here if we didn't sink it down into the mountain. So, all in all, I think that's uh, you know not a not a bad compromise to make. Our nav mesh should be done. You can see. Click off of that. That our nav mesh has been eaten into the train, so our AI are going to respect the same boundaries as our players. As always, I hope you're having an excellent evening, morning, afternoon, late night caffeine fueled session. And if you have any comments, suggestions, improvements, make sure to contact me in my uh, on my website. You know, the information should be around here on the asset store in the description of this this YouTube video. And I love getting letting getting suggestions and feedback, and I can definitely discuss why I chose the system I did that has that you know one little hiccup, like I said. But hope you're having a good one.